Fan, press some hand, let's get in the car, I said She grabbed my hand, girl's rest, you met the bar witnesses Tears fled the head, I'm waiting, I dead, she tweet I guess she confess, she thinking less, I'm drinking less Bathroom says, best to get spontaneous, I stereotype Put to rest tonight, tonight, tonight Imagine, believe, and achieve, it works Skyline as I rise like fireworks Smell through the bat, don't touch my perf Yo, hello everybody, welcome to this edition of the uh, After the Storm Where's my thing at? Oh, what in the hell just happened? If you could what the hell? Chip in five, ten, or even yeah. oh, oh, that's why I'm <laughs> tell Donald Trump came. I was the like, hell? what the hell do I care about Donald five, Trump? Yeah. Wait, are you serious right now? Anyway, hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to this edition of After the Storm. Of course, I'm your host, Matt Clark. And the Thunder got away with the 113-112 victory, improving to 23-14 and 14 on the road, and now are in – Comfortable first place in the AFC West, or uh, AFC, in the NBA West, Western Conference. You can think, you know, I've been trying to keep up on my football stuff, putting all my uh, all my things together for football because uh, all the the, uh, the uh, schedules came out. Well, that, well the, who they're going to play home and away schedules came out. They didn't, the actual dates aren't there. But anyway, the Thunder took care of business tonight. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to, you know, get everybody into the thing because I know that, uh, you know, when I start up on After the Storm, it takes me a little bit longer. I mean, the, the intro is not as long. So I don't have time to uh, to uh, do everybody, put everybody in. So it's going to take me a little bit. So I, hopefully you guys will just uh, – Deal with me for just a second after, uh, so I can put everybody in here to let everybody know that I can tag everybody and make sure everybody knows that we are up and uh, ready to go tonight. And remember, um, if you guys want to uh, add anything uh, during the show today, you can do that. You can go to, remember, uh, search After the Storm <clears throat> uh, on YouTube. After the storm, OKC okay, Thunder. If you want to do that, if you'll do that, you can go ahead and do that, and, and and subscribe, like, hit notifications, and then if you have any questions, I see we added a couple of new sponsors. Uh, let me see. Key moments of the game. We already got a question. Key moments of the game. I like this. Um, let me see. Uh, Gordon's three transition dunk. Wallace's buckets. Uh, wow, I like that. People will eat giddy triple double. I like the fact that he had that in SGA's bucket. But those two points to keep us in the game. So I like the way he said it. And then, of course, Rashawn Robinson um, comes in and just say, I like that when you guys are coming. Uh, Giddy excels when SGA is – let me see. I don't see what he's talking about here. Hold on. Giddy excels when – I don't know what he's saying. Giddy excels when, when he's with that – when SGA is out. I guess that's what it says. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that, but he does – he has picked up. And the thing that I love about Josh, and like I said, uh, remember, guys, you can go ahead and like and comment on anything that we're talking about here on After the Storm at uh, at YouTube. Just search After the Storm, OK, it's Thunder, and I can see all of your stuff uh, right there, and then we can continue to talk about it. Uh, now, I will say this. Uh, Giddy does excel, and he, but Giddy, remember, has been excelling lately because, you know, he has no legal troubles. And I told everybody that I gave Josh a complete pass this year because I don't care who you are, you're about to go to prison, you're not thinking about anything but staying the hell out of jail. And so I think Josh is in the beginning of the year where we are at the end. He is in the beginning. And like I've said many times, I like what Josh is doing. I like his play. I love when Josh is aggressive. And remember when we first started doing the show, Part of what we had talked about when SGA and Josh started clicking two years ago at the end of the second year and what we were doing, and I was like, hey, this team is going to be different. And that's why I picked us to win 40 games, and we did. And then you got J-Dub and you got SGA, you got J-Dub and you got Chet. And, of course, Chet did not play last year, but you could just see the growth and what we were doing. And then this year they were predicted to win 44 games, and we are now at 53, I believe. I'll check that in just a second. I think that's right. Uh, but anyway, so I like what we're doing as far as the Thunder are concerned. Or 52, I guess we're at 52. I like what we're doing. I like everything. I just don't like the coaches' lineups. I just don't. I mean, I don't know why the hell are you not playing Wiggins more? Because we made a run when J-Dub was off the bench, was not playing. We made a run. And then in the fourth quarter, 
we made a nice run. So, but anyway, at the beginning of the game, uh, I, I didn't like our energy at all. I didn't like what we were doing. Uh, 17 points in the first quarter is unacceptable. But, of course, SJ had just got back, and he had missed the previous couple games. And he still doesn't look 100% healthy to me. He just doesn't. Um, and remember, the cooler, as in Coach Dagnall, uh, remember SJ has not scored 30 in four of the last five of the last six games. He's only scored one time, 30 points one time in the last six games. And it's just because of who he's played him with. And, like, my, my thing is this, why the hell is Wiggins not playing more? I don't get that. I don't get that. But, anyways, 34-39, you got SGA, Joe, J. Will, Josh, and Dort in the game. And I just uh, – Dort, I, I I don't know. And I, we, talk, we have this little chain that we talk about, myself, the commander, Randy Wright, and Drew Henthorne and, and uh, Nathan Taylor. And I asked the question, I said, why the hell do we foul so much on three-point shooters? Have you guys noticed that, how much the Thunder foul? Have you guys noticed that? It's crazy. But I will say this. I liked what we did uh, coming into the uh, the second quarter. We made a run late, and we always make runs when J-Dub is off the bench. And, of course, we go into the third quarter, well, up 50-46. But, like I said, when you put the right team in there, the right lineups, and let's face it, all year long, the right lineups have been simple. SGA, Isaiah Joe, Wiggins, Kaysen, J. Will for just a few minutes, and then Chet to finish it off. That is your five, six that when you got to make a run, and it's always when Wiggins is on the floor. And I don't understand why he wasn't playing more. I just don't. And when you go in and you look at our halftime stats, remember, we're up 50, 50 46 at half. Okay, and when you look at what we were doing at at halftime, I'm just going, I don't, I don't really get what they're doing. I just don't. I just don't. Here's the halftime scores. You have Chet with nine. Uh, this is not the halftime stats. I don't think that's my halftime stats. That cannot be right because SGA did not have that many points. Uh, let me let me re-switch this up because that is not correct. Uh, Thunder. Yeah, I know that's not right. There we go. Sorry about that, everyone. I switched it up. But anyway, here are the halftime here here are the halftime stats. I thought I had this in. I normally check this before I come on air. But here are the halftime stats. You have Chet, once again, I don't know where the hell Chet is. I don't know where the hell he is. Five points. Two for five. J J J Dub was just playing great. Seventeen points, seven for ten, zero for two from three, but with uh, no rebounds, and that's just unacceptable, dude. You have to rebound the basketball. Um, Seventeen points. SGA three for nine, one for two. You know he definitely was a little rusty. One rebound, two assists, one steal. I thought he did not play well at all. Josh one for four, only two points at halftime. Lou Dort four points, one for four. Uh, from three both times, and I just think Lou is just trying to get – he's just he, – it's like this team is losing what their identity is to me. J. Will, eight minutes, seven points. I thought J. Will played pretty good with six rebounds. Gordon Hayward, zero points. I don't – I still don't get the I, – I don't, I don't get it. Um, I just I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Uh, I, Kendrick Williams, six minutes, one for two, two points. Isaiah Joe – 10 minutes, two for three, and I like the fact that Isaiah was, uh, was was shooting the ball better the last couple of games. Six points. Aaron Wiggins, six minutes. 0 for two. I, I don't understand why he's not playing more. Kaysen Wallace, nine minutes, zero points. And even though he played good, I thought he, he wasn't – Kaysen wasn't scoring, but I still liked the way that he started out. I still liked, I still liked what I what I was seeing for him. And thank you, Sean. I appreciate that you are correct with the – the line of flaws. I agree with that. Thank you for for agreeing with me on that deal. And like I said, everybody, just you know, you know, if you have a comment or you want to say something about what I'm talking about, please do. I mean, I don't get my feelings hurt. You know, as long as it's something that's legit and you're talking about, I'll just you know, I'll answer your questions or I'll say something about it. But anyway, we start the third quarter, up four, and Dort. We started with Casey Wallace instead of Dort because Dort had his four fouls. And then Dort came in for him immediately. It was 55 to 60 because they went on a run. And I just, I just, I don't understand the lineups. I don't, I don't really get it. 
I don't I don't understand what he does. But I just don't. I I'm just completely confused on what the hell he's doing with stuff. I just don't get it. Um, Rashawn is over here saying uh, Chet struggles with big teams when he is the big one. Chet better with J. Will, K. Rich in big lineups. Uh, see, I disagree with that, Rashawn. What I think is is better when you have Chet and J. Will together. Okay. Because then Chet, J, J Dub, J Will can play the big guy, and Chet can be the four. Chet is a four; he's not a five. He's not; he's a four, and he's just going to get pushed around all day long. And that's why J Will has to play more with them. Oh, is that what you said, brother? Let me see. Chet, let me see. They want Chet's better with J Will, K Rich, and big lineups. Okay, or either one. But like I, that's what I was talking about, uh, Rashawn. Is that I'm talking about that J Will and Chet, not K Rich. J Will and Chet. K. Rich, he's small. That means Chet is at the five. J. K. Rich is too small. And what I've talked about all year long is the difference between the Thunder and Minnesota and the Nuggets and uh, the uh, the uh, Bucks and uh, the Celtics. We're six seven, six eight. Okay, they're six nine, six ten, playing the same positions. And I like K. Rich, but he's too small to play center. He can play a guard. He can play. He can play three, maybe the four, but he can't play the five. He's too small, and when he gets matched up with a big guy, it's just we get dominated every time. And so that's that was my point about that. To me, J Dub, J Will, and Chet are best together because that way J Will can play the center, Chet can be on the four because Chet does cover pretty well out on the perimeter. So I do like that. Um, anyway, uh, the third quarter to me, I did not like our energy. I did not like what we were really doing there. Uh, I've got my notes here. I just don't, I just, you know, they started out making six threes in the third quarter. Our perimeter defense, which we're really, really good at, was just terrible. Uh, But once again, Josh doing what he does, and I love it when Josh is aggressive. And I've said this all the time. When Josh is aggressive, the Thunder are better. And that's just what I believe. That When they are doing it, those, those are the things to me. They really are. So, uh, Part of, you know, at the third quarter, we end up, and remember, we are lead the league in third quarter points, okay? In point differential, we are number one in the league. But yet, we started out 50-46, and we ended the quarter 75-85. We got spanked by that much in the third quarter, and we lead the NBA in third quarter points. So the Thunder are going to have to pick up with that. But I do believe a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, getting Shea back, trying to get back into the flow with him and what we're doing, that's, to me, that's what I think is really the the, the crux of that because we did miss Shea for the two games. And like I said, I don't know if, if SGA is, is all the way 100%. And like I said, to me, leave him out as long as we need to because this next stretch of what we have coming up, I'm more worried about than I am him playing. And he did sit out, what is that, a whole week, basically, he sat out. And so if you've had a thigh bruise before, you know exactly it's it, it takes a minute to loosen up. And you can see that he's just not – I just don't like the chemistry. I don't like our body language. But at the same time, the one thing that I disagree with all analysts is this. We played in so many damn close games in the last year and a half, two years or two and a half years, that – we are used to it. We understand what we got to do defensively. We got to get stops. We understand that what we got to do is get a good shot and not necessarily a three, but a good shot on the other end. We understand that. And the third thing we understand is put the damn ball in SGA's hands because remember, guys, remember, if I don't know if you guys remember this, we've talked about this several times. SGA, and this is what he is, okay? This is what he means. SGA leads the NBA in clutch time field goal percentage. 61%. He leads the NBA in clutch time field goal points percentage. Jokic is second at 58. LeBron is third at 54. And by the way, Jokic put on the show again tonight. So anyway, when you're looking at this, this is what you've got to see right here. That's why at the end of the game, we were on our text chain, and they've got uh, Jada bringing the ball before. Put the damn ball in SGA's hands. SGA is the better facilitator. J-Dub works better in space. And if he's got the ball, he can't work in space because he doesn't have the handles. But Dagnall, once again, the Thunder, once again, are trying to promote him. And to me, it's really simple. Put the ball in SGA's hands. Let him make the moves. 
And then he will set J Dub up to create space because J Dub works way better in space than he does trying to have the ball in his hands. Too much to do, and he doesn't really have the requisite skill set to do what he needs to, what they want, expect him to do. So, joined by my guy Nathan Taylor of YNB. What's up, bro? Hey, man. How's it going? It's going, man. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing pretty good, man. Yeah, good, good. Good Easter, you know, and all that. Oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah, we're talking about, we've got some good good comments going on the show today. Uh, said he agreed, J-Dub can't make those clutch time free throws. He, he did, he, he, he's, J-Dub is a good player. But to me, he's a number two. He's a great player. He's, he's, a, he's not a great player. He's a, he's, a, he's a good player. He's not a great player. Great, don't, don't, hey, he's not great. Stop. Uh, okay. Great, listen, let me, great. Let me, let me, he's let me. not great. He's a very good player. Okay, let me let me change that. Just Thank a you. Bit. He's, he's a good he's, he's a, a good player. He's a very good that's player. Showing potential to be a great. No, he's a very good player. Is what he is. He's not going to be a that's great player. He's a very good player. Great players are SGA, a a a, a Jokic, a LeBron, a Steph. He ain't going ever. He ain't that. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. See, I, I have different tiers. I guess there. there's one tier for great. That's where that tier is. Everybody else is either good, either you can you're okay, well, or you're maybe. good, or you're very good. And I think he's good, trending into very good. But I almost put him at the very good right now. Okay, I was going to say because you know I was going to say um, potential star, star superstar. No, and potential star, be, yes. Uh, potential star, yes. That's yes. where I was going to put him. Not With superstar. The to be a star, but not a superstar. Correct. Not a superstar. That's correct. Okay, so we're on the same level. We just had a different radio. Account. Yeah, well, when you say superstar and and that's that's top of the list. That's LeBron. That's that's SGA. That's first team All yeah. NBA. He ain't that. I was thinking you were going to go good, very good, excellent, or something like that. No, so that's kind of where I'm no, at. no, no, no. <laughs> I think, but like I said, he's a, he's a good player that's trending to be very, very good. He's a very good player that's going to be very, yeah. very good. But is he going to be a great player? Yeah, no. I, He's not going to be an MVP. No. And the whole thing is this. I like Dub, and I liked – and one thing, we, somebody was texting me. They go, can J-Dub defend? I go, no, he's not that great of a defender. And he got he's, exposed. He's, he's not a bad defender. No, he's I said he's not, not that, I said he's not that great of a defender. He's not a bad defender, but he's not that great of a defender, and he's been exposed the last three games. He's, yeah, he's, he's serviceable. Yes, but I'd be better than Josh, way better. But oh, sure. I mean, but he's, he's been probably, ex- he's been exposed the last three games bad. Out of ten, what would you put him at? Maybe a six, six and a half, seven, with the potential to be better. Okay. Yeah. No. I, I'm. I'm. I'm on board with that. Yeah. But he's, he's not. He's, the thing I like about him on the defensive end is the activity around the rim. Like he's he's a good backside blocker. He he is. A, a but that's not a. Defender. That's not. We're talking about on ball. When I say this, I'm talking about an on ball defender. That's what I'm talking about. I'm okay, not so talking you're not about talking off, every aspect of defense. I'm talking just, about just on ball, ball defender, yes. That's what I was talking about. Okay. On ball okay. defender. He's not very good hey, at I, that. When, let me run this by you right quick and and this is kind of out of what we're talking about. But mm-hmm. I saw something yesterday that asked me a question, or well, it asked the you know the world a question, and I was just kinda like, eh, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. So what former Thunder player, any any former Thunder player, would be the best fit on this team? To take him to the next level. None. You mean in their prime at this None. age? In their prime at this age or yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, in, 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 yes, in, in their prime. In their prime at this age? Oh, uh, KD, without question. See, I had that. I hadn't hit the number that's, one. That's not. That, I think that's number it. Two, James. No, number because two is where. It, there is no number two. Maybe, maybe. Oh, uh, I would do uh, Abaka, number two. That's yeah. That's. And 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 Sabonis. Actually, I take Sabonis number two. Okay. I take Sabonis two. No, I don't want Stephen Adams because he clogs the lane. Yeah. Okay. But now, give him now rebounding wise, yes, because he's gonna. We're not gonna be giving up as many offensive rebounds like we gave up what fifteen tonight. So yeah, he would not. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, that was driving me crazy. My deal is this: you have J. Will. And Chet on the floor, and you put J Dub underneath the basket with J Will. What the hell was that? On a free throw? Well, wasn't didn't didn't J Will and I? I didn't see the exact play, and I and I kind of just kind of blurb of it. But did J Will over pursue the block out? 
on the on the final rebound there? Yes. On the sequence? Where yes. They got, yeah. That's well, but, okay, but my thing is this. Mean, on the free throw to give them the play, you had J-Dub and J-Will instead of Chet and J-Will. What was that? <laughs> can't do that. What was can't that? that? You have to have – I mean, he just – especially. I was going to say, especially as many free throws as they were missing. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, our big, you know what? The biggest boo boo, a big bugaboo we've had as a Thunder organization, as a team, is giving up offensive rebounds since we lost Steven Adams. Mm-hmm. We yeah. give up too many mm-hmm. offensive rebounds. Like, we like, we got beat by the Bulls two years ago because, you know, uh, Muscala couldn't rebound. Like, dude, box the guy out. <laughs> That's part of the thing. But let's go to this. Start the fourth quarter. We're down 75-85, and you start with J-Dub, Wiggins, Kaysen, K-Rich, and Josh. And I'm a huge K-Rich fan, just so is I got Rashawn Robinson. He's obviously a big – because he's talking. He's he's obviously a big K-Rich guy. And I, we know you are. He, I'm not so much. He has a great place to I'm not great, so much a K-Rich a fan. I'm an okay K-Rich fan. But like I said, to I, I me – in certain spots, he does things to help win games. I understand that. But I'm just saying, I'm, I'm trying to win games, I and I want – why the hell is Wiggins not on the floor? I thought you said Wiggins was on the floor. No, I'm saying, why isn't he on the floor more? He was no, in the fourth I, quarter. I that one. He was in the fourth quarter. I mean, as big a, as big a K-Rich fan as I am, you know I'm a bigger Wiggins fan. So Yeah. And it's my thing. The, explain the – the Dort versus Case and Wallace minutes. I mean, I understand Dort plays good defense, but tonight, dude, they were abusing him. Yes, yes. Well, Dort just once again, you know, and I texted this with us, me, you, and Drew, and the commander. Why do we commit so Dort? He fouls more than three point shooters. What the hell is that? What are you doing? I mean, it's just like he's done it over the last two, three years. I don't get it. Well, I, and if you notice too, like, and, and I know Dort's a lot stronger than Case. And, you know, uh, Brunson's a pretty – I mean, he's a pretty good bully ball guard. No, Br- Brunson, you're not – Brunson, down. you're not – I don't care who the hell you are. You're not guarding him one-on-one. He's like Shea. No, he, no, he no, go, no, You're I not guarding – I don't care who's on I him. Think, he's going to do what he does. And I thought the Knicks don't did Don't you think uh, – I was going to say, don't you think that the minutes Kaysen had on him were pretty decent? Yes, yes. I mean, he, but, he but I'm just saying this. Anticipations and what, like but that. I'm saying in the fourth quarter, okay – in the fourth quarter, when you had this lineup, we went on a 13-3 run, okay? To start the, the fourth it's quarter because of that lineup. It helps, it, helps, it helps having, I mean, everything, every aspect of our team game. When Josh Giddy is on all cylinders, man, I mean, he just makes the team completely different. I agree. Oh, by the way, we have a, it, we have a it, question. Shea or Brunson? Hey, no, no. no <laughs> We have a question no on our we have a question on our YouTube channel on the uh, question, and he goes, "He likes Shea, really? Yeah, <laughs> you like SGA, really? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> but I, I mean, is there is there any comparison? No, I mean, no, he's unguardable, bro. J- J- Brunson's a great player, but a good yes. player. I'm sorry, let me go. No, he's he's a very he's good, a very good he's a player. he's a very good player. Yes, very good player. But he's not, dude. He's not Shea. He's, he's not Shea. Nobody, nobody is Shea no. other than, than Jokic and maybe Ant Man. Yeah. Now, my I mean, thing was this, is that it was 90-91, and uh, they bring Brunson in. It was, excuse me, 92-93 with seven minutes and 42 seconds to go, and they bring Brunson in. And they don't bring SGA in until the four-minute mark. Oh, four minutes. Oh, my God. I, I'm like, <laughs> oh, by the way, oh, oh excuse me. Bex Chat is a girl. She goes, by the way, I'm a girl. Well, girl, uh, you still, Bex Chat, I can say, Chat, I can say this. Doesn't matter if you're a girl, you're very knowledgeable in your questions. You know, you can be knowledgeable and be a female. That has, you know, me, boy or girl has nothing to do with, you know, how knowledgeable you are to me. Now, maybe some insights in the game, your insight may be different, female versus male, because you didn't play it. But on the other side of that, yeah, no, girl, to me, if you get, if you understand the game, you understand the game, boy or girl. So, And by the way, I trained some couple little girls, and I've got two of them, especially I got a five-year-old, Nathan. She's unbelievable. I got two five-year-olds. They're unbelievable, dude. They're going to be they're gonna be beasts, okay? You got any Kate, that, Kate and Clark's going there? They're five. <laughs> I don't know. They're no, five. I'm just saying. They're five. Dude, I don't know. She is so good. Dude. I know, but they're I, five, I mean, bro. No, they're I, five. I, I, 
I know. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I would almost <laughs> rather watch her than most men basketball in college anyway. The thing yeah. I like about, well, the thing, <laughs> I got the matchup I want to see tomorrow, okay? Mm-hmm. Iowa and LSU, right? Uh, that's what I want to see. And I wanted, uh-huh. to, and I, I want. I mean, I got two. There's some games tomorrow I want to see. I'm excited about women's basketball. But, but anyway, back to us. The fourth quarter, they made a run, and to me, this is my thing with Dagnall. Whenever we put SGA in the game, the opposing coach immediately puts their best player in the game. If he's and, already in, not already in. Yeah, but I'm just saying, if they're not in, though, if they're not in, they put him in. And Dagnall stays yeah. with the lineups too long. We had a stretch and we had them going, and uh, let me see. Let me see. She said, uh, "Did y'all see poor KD the other day?" <laughs> KD um, KD was brutal to us the other day, was he not, Nathan? He let us up. Yeah, the rest of the team let the rest of the team to do anything. At KD let us up. <laughs> he we had no answer for him. We had no answer for KD. Everybody. You know, there's no answer. Look, I tell us, KD when he's done, he'll be in my top ten. He will replace Tim Duncan as my four. Yeah, it's close, but yes, I agree. Yeah, he'll he'll take he'll he'll take him. But anyway, the thing is this: at the end of the game, we made some terrible decisions with the ball. At oh, the end of the game, horrible, terrible, horrible, terrible decisions with the ball. The it passes was, were like, but, I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, J Dub, that what he did. Then uh, who was it? Wiggins. What the hell are you doing? And then uh, SJ getting the ball stole from him down low. What the? Hell? I mean, like, what are y'all doing? What kind of? Yeah, I'm like, well, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of what happened at the end of the game. But in the end, you and I were talking along with Drew Henthorne, Husker Drew Picks, and uh, the Commander Randy. We were talking, at, and when they took the ball out, I thought they were going in J Dub's hands. But fortunately, too, but fortunately, who was taking the ball out, which is why I tell you we need Josh. I have no argument with that if he can play like he's playing. Like, yeah, I mean, but I'm talking about passing the ball I, in. J Dub was clear no, up to now. J Dub was open at the top. Josh didn't even really look at him. He immediately gave the ball to SGA, posted down low. But but are we agreed that you can't have a guy on your roster that's playing 25 minutes a game like Josh was playing earlier? An issue. You can't have a guy. Okay, first of all, like Nathan, I've had this discussion. I know, I know, I know, but I'm just saying. No, like, quit saying it. You can't keep I, saying the same thing. There's no, you can't, you, I don't care who you are. When you're about to go to jail, you're not, you can't say anything that he says. I, He's doing, you can't. That's, that's not what I'm saying, though. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying, if Josh, that's truly who Josh is, which it's not, and we know that. But if it is, you you can't have a guy on just for that amount of time if he's taking minutes. You can't have a guy just to put okay. the ball in now. Josh is playing yeah. the way Josh. I expected Josh to play this year. Finally, and I I think that's great. Man. He, okay, I mean like I, I'm I'll be the first one to admit when I'm wrong, man. It, it, okay, this is my thing. Like I've said two years ago when we started this show at the end of not like the year the end of the year before last. I saw SGA and Josh completely change my opinion on what the Thunder were doing. And myself and the commander and Mark Long of SRB, we're, we were only one of, what, five or six people that were going to the game out of, you know, there was 8,000. They are talking about, oh, 12 or 13,000. No, there were no 12, 13,000 people in the stand. No. <laughs> no, there was not that many. No. All the suites were closed. And we start watching him, and I said, this Josh Giddy, if he stays aggressive, this is what's going to happen. And then last year, I predicted the Thunder would win 40 games, as I've said many times. And they were only predicted to win 17. Everybody told me I was out of my damn mind. And I'm t- I said, I'm telling you, what I saw the year before, this is where we can be. And then Jada was a great surprise, which added to what we were doing. Because remember, the Thunder have only had, the, only, there's only been two times that the NBA has had three 30-point scores in a game. Okay. And the Thunder had both of those. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Okay. So, and that was with J-Dub, Josh, and SGA. And then, of course, KD, mm-hmm. Russell, and, KD, and, and, Harden, Harden. and Harden. Harden. So, that's yes. what I was seeing coming into this year. Okay? And then when Chet came back and then Josh had the struggles, I said, okay, that's not going to be I, – I just didn't know how many what was going to happen. Okay? And so when we predicted, what did they predict us to win, Nathan? 44 games, was it? 44 games, right? 
Yeah, 44-45. Yeah, and then I originally said 57 games, and I think you were at 54, 55, and then we watched the preseason. I was at 52. Yeah, I'm saying, I was saying until we watched the preseason, and then you and I both went down on our numbers. <laughs> okay, we both went, oh, yeah, this coach and what he's doing, yeah, we, yeah, this team is a, a mess. In, in my, I'm just, I'm watching the replays, and or I'm watching the highlights, and if we have, and it, I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we've had a game all year where all four of our guys have played well. And am I wrong with that? No. No. We, we, it, it, imagine how good this team can be if we had, one, the right rotations, which won't happen with this coach. No, he's not going to do it two, wrong. No. No. Two, all four of our guys play at peak level for an entire season. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'd be, my God, dude. Well, hey, Nathan, we have a question. Okay, well, the first of all, Bex Chat, we predicted that – I think – well, here, let me pull up our stats. Uh, th- thunder over under. Uh, I had 52 as the high because I dropped from 57. And Nathan had 54, 52, and you dropped to 50 after watching. Okay? So we're already at my season high, and they've already passed your season high. But I had originally predicted 57 yeah. until I watched this play and I dropped it to 52 because I just didn't trust the coach. So that's 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 the answer to your question, uh, Bex Chat. And then here's our other question, Nathan. Rashawn's asking, is commenting, Josh uh, is more aggressive when SGA is on the bench resting. Josh is more passive and unsure when to shoot when he is paired with SGA. What is your thought on that? Mm. I, I really, I've been trying to pay attention to that. <clears throat> um, but if I recall before SGA went out, last couple, not you know, like the last two games uh-huh. he played, I think Josh was pretty. Now, of course, I didn't pay attention to the on court, off court minutes. I should have done that, but I haven't. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I think he's probably on, on par, but maybe a little bit in between. So yeah. I, I would say. Let's wait and see on that. Right. Yeah, well, my deal is this: I, I kind of agree. With, I kind of agree with what Sean is saying to a certain extent, but to me, what really the situation is: Josh plays well with SGA, but he Josh is better with the ball in his hands. Okay, and when SGA, I think he he, he, he when SGA is off the bench, he has the ball more in his hands, and when he SGA is in the game, he's more of a catch and shoot three point shooter. I think that's the answer. Yeah, I think that if that's the answer to his question, I think that's kind of how you look at it. Josh is more of a catch and shoot guy versus when J Dub's off. J will. I mean, uh, S off there. He's more of the ball because J Dub can't handle. And yes, that's exactly what yeah, you're saying. No, yes, but we don't. We don't want Josh to do that. Though. Like that's not. That's not his game. Yeah. Well, so, the whole thing is, I don't mind Josh having the ball and doing his thing, and I agree with Rashawn at some points, but at the same time. You know, Josh and SGA on the floor together, I like it when they start double-teaming SGA because then Josh is the guy that SGA hits at the top of the key that makes the correct decisions. And J-Dub is getting better at that, okay? But I want the ball in Josh's hands when at the end of games against good teams and they dump and they double-team him. That's what I want, so – well, let's go ahead and take our thank, take a break here. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, SRB, if you have any needs for engineering or surveying or planning. They are the people to talk to. They love, love, love to be behind the scenes. If you have a complex or a water plant or something, a dam or whatever needs to be done, hit our guys up over at SRB and Mark Long. Collaborative Logic, if you have needs for computers, software, to make your office run smoother or website design. They are the people to contact. So hit my guy, Russell Willifort, up over there. And the thing I love about them most is they can remote in. They don't have to come in and disrupt your office unless it is actually a computer problem that actually has to be manually fixed. If it's software, they can remote in. Ogro Trucking, if you have needs for dirt, rock, or sand to be moved, hit my guy, Jose Fierro, up over at Oak Grove Trucking. YNB, family owned and operated since 1912. They are the bank that makes things happen. They're an equal housing lender, member of the FDIC, proud sponsor for us to go out and support women, minority, and black-owned businesses in the OKC area. So hit our guys up over there. And my guy, Nathan Taylor, of course, will be there. Now I'm going to get it straight where the main bank is. Uh, you can pre-qualify <laughs> online at www.ynbok.com. That's www.ynbok.com. Or you can go in and see my guy, Nathan Taylor, at the main bank at 401M. 
in downtown Yukon. Even though I disagree with you and the commander, downtown is a block away. Is it 48 steps? Is that what you said? Yes. Oh, so by the way, guys, no. So tell everybody, no, no. So we're doing the show live the other day at the main bank. And so uh, I need to go get some cash out. And so their ATM is at the drive-in. And so Nathan's like, oh, well, it's only 10 steps away. No, it is not. It was 54. It was was exaggeration. It was 54. 54. 54. I had to walk to to downtown. (laughs) You had to walk a whole 40, 50 step. Man, I'm so sorry, dude. And then, of course, YMP, he switches off the Parkway and 39th Expressway, or 66, whichever one you want to call it. YMB Mustang, 218 North Mustang Road. YMB Parkway, which is off Garth Brooks and I 40, just south of I 40, right there in front of the hospital. Can't miss it. And YMB Peoples. 212 no- steps from I 40. Why are you, can I finish, man? Is it okay if I go through this? Yeah. You don't have no idea how many steps it is because you definitely haven't walked it. No, I YMB don't. Peoples, no, I don't. which is on and 23rd in, in Bethany between Rockwell and MacArthur. And then, of course, Shelter Insurance, the Mark Pemberton Agency, located in 4609 Southeast 29th in Dell City, Oklahoma, 670-2424. They're open 9 to 5, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 1 on Fridays, closed on the weekend, probably serving the Middale area since 1982. So they're doing their thing. Uh, uh, we had a question that J Dub did a really good deal. I thought J Dub played great tonight. Oh, yeah, did you? Those two yeah, two free. I mean, that was a huge. And our boy Rashawn said that about his free throws. <laughs> but I will say this: Yeah, he. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean that just shows. That's why he's not SGA because he can't. He doesn't hit. Those, he doesn't hit those things. He doesn't hit clutch shots. Now he'll hit a clutch shot every now and then. Yeah. By the and way, the dog, dog, By the way, Nathan. Hey, Nathan. He goes. He comments and says, "There's one thing that Dort is going through screens wrong. He takes the wrong route, chasing behind. Then when he should go through screens. Well, okay, Rashawn. That's kind of hard. Depends on you know." Depends on who you're guarding. If you go under screen on side, like if you go under screen on Jalen Brunson, he's gonna pull up and shoot it. So mm-hmm. it depends it's on how you're doing it. So that that's not necessarily it. Like when he fouled Jason Jalen Brunson, he stuck his hand up. He hit him on the hand first of all, clear foul. And then the second thing, he did not give him room to to come down in the passing lane and the drop lane to drop. And Jason Brun, Brun, uh, <clears throat> Brunson always jumps forward. When I teach kids in my academy, I teach you to jump forward not not straight up and down when you jump you want to use your momentum to go forward you don't want to go straight up or straight down unless the guy is already there and he's in your face but if you're catching and shooting you always want to jump forward always so so i kind of disagree with that but um oh thank you bex chat she says she's gonna let her friends know about the about the show hopefully you've liked subscribe and hit notification uh, Bex already on our show and please thank you for spreading the word we appreciate it uh it said, you know, this is my thing, Nathan. You and I both, we were texting back and forth. And we were worried that SGA was not going to get the ball at the end. Were we not? Oh, yes. And, what did I say right afterwards? And, and that's an MVP, right? Yeah, now he, and like, but you know what? Uh, big boy was a beast tonight. <laughs> he's a beast, man. Jokic, yeah, he was. he's a beast. He straight up is a beast. 26, 18. Yeah, something like stupid, dude. And then, of course, uh, guys, for you first to get caught up here on the NBA scores tonight. Here with this, dang man, why is that not? Why did I not do that? I was in a hurry. Uh, here are the NBA scores tonight. The Nuggets took care of business. They just spanked the Cavaliers, but they were at home and they had just got beaten. So you knew what was going to happen right there. The Clippers took care of business over the Hornets. Shocker. Seventy Sixers took care of the Raptors. Shocker on the road. They should have did that. Now, the Heat took care of business uh, over the Wizards. Now, here's my shocker. The Bulls beat the T-Wolves. The Bulls beat the T-Wolves. And then, of course, the Mavericks beat Houston in Houston, snapping their 11-game winning streak. The Warriors got back on the winning track, beating the Spurs 117-113. Uh, or still on the winning track, I guess you could say that. And then the Thunder took care of business. And the Kings, are they still beating the Jazz, Nathan? Do you know? Uh, the only thing I, I – uh, not the only thing I like Thunder and the Thunder one. The only 
My second favorite thing other than the Thunder win is the Houston loss. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> now, now. Okay, here are the standings currently right now, Nathan, as we see them. Okay? The Thunder is sitting atop. The Kings are smoking the jazz, brother. The Kings are? So the Kings are now. Yeah, they will be 43 and 31. Uh, but I still think they'll be in seventh because I think the Suns have the tiebreaker. So here are the thing. Let me see. Uh, the thunder, yeah, the thunder, the thunder are winning. I think, I think, I think my games back are right. But tomorrow on the unpopular hour, our daytime show, we'll know more about what that is tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, the Nuggets are in second. The T Wolves are in third because the T Wolves uh, have one less win than the Nuggets. So the Nug Nuggets are a half game back from us because they have a their one loss into the. Actually, they're a full game back, aren't they, Nathan? Because they have one full uh, loss. They're a full game back because they have one loss. loss. They're one more loss than we do. So, but this is when a tough schedule comes up. So this is what we're looking at. Uh, in our schedule coming up, this is what we got remaining. We have to play the Mavs, who are in sixth. We have to play, uh, let me see, the Sixers, who are in eighth. They won tonight. We got to play the uh, Pacers, and we got to play the Celtics. We have to play the Bucks. Those are the teams that we have to play, and here we are. This is, this is where we are. And, what, and so that kind of makes me. Kings, too. The Kings. Yeah, so I think that the, the Nuggets are, I think you're right, Rashawn, Nuggets are a full game back. Yes, they are. Uh yeah, I still think the Nuggets are going to get the one seed. Yeah, yeah. I well because which of what I, we have I like. Which, which, which yeah, I like though, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But I like what I we're doing. I rather than Thunder. Yeah, I agree. Rather than play the not the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, and then this is our Thunder. Uh, the remaining what we've got left. Uh, and right now we are two and two. In our last games that we talked about, the Thunder were having to win in this stretch. Uh, we're two and two uh, because we lost the game before the Pelicans game, so we lost the Bucks. So we're two and two in this stretch. Actually, we're three and two. Three and two. We're three and two because we lost to the Bucks, then we lost, beat the Pelicans, then we lost to the Rockets, which was a bad loss. Houston. That was yeah. Houston was a bad loss. That was a bad loss, but no SGA. SGA is playing. We win the game. Agreed. Yeah. We yeah, win that we game. We almost won the game anyway. We almost won the game anyway. We had some bad turnovers. Uh, Bex chat hopes we get the Rockets in the first round of the playoffs. That's not gonna happen. Nah, that ain't happen. <laughs> they're, they're chat. That's not gonna. They're not gonna get it through. Uh, they ain't beating the Lakers. In the they're not. Game they're game. not doing that. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, it's, it's not happening. But we're gonna see what's gonna happen down the stretch. But here's our thing. Now on Tuesday we have at the Sixers. And then at the Celtics on back-to-back -back nights. Now, thank God we don't have to listen to the Bali sports guys. And I could not listen. To, Nathan, I had to turn the thing off today. I couldn't listen to the radio really? because your Even boy was Pinto? on. Your boy was on tonight. Even with Pinto? No, Nick Dude, Gallo Pinto was, was on. TV? Nick Gallo was on. Yeah, but Pinto was doing the TV. <laughs> but I have to listen to Michael Cage. We still get Pinto. I got to listen to Michael Cage. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. Not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm oh, scared. dude, he was. What was he doing? He said something. He was. He was, he was griping about some calls, which there were some bad calls tonight. But, um, he was griping about uh, one of the door fouls. I think I don't know. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I was like, he hits him right there. He hits him right there. It's just I. I don't. I don't listen to him. I just can't. I just can't. But anyway. What do you think about our, our next two games? We have at the Sixers and at the Celtics on back-to-back -back nights, Tuesday and Wednesday. What is your thought process on that? Sixers are first, right? Sixers are first? Yeah, there's a back-to-back -back nights on the Tuesday and Wednesday. And Sixers on Tuesday and uh, Celtics on Wednesday? Yes. And by yeah, the way, I think, think that Celtics game is on ESPN, I believe. Isn't it, Nathan? Can you check that? Uh, yeah, I can check that. I think um, it's on ESPN. We're not going to be – well, the Celtics, the Celtics won us because we beat the Celtics in Oklahoma City. By the way, that was a yeah, great game. Yeah, we, we beat the Celtics. Yeah. Oh, dude, we got back to back. Uh, we got back to back national games. Yeah, yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. Did we? I thought. TNT. Excuse me, TNT. Yeah, 76ers, 76ers, 
ESPN. Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought. It got switched to ESPN. Uh, and that's why I say SGA has got to play better because now that he's on national TV, if he does what he's doing, we can stay in first place. Uh, you know, that's going to bolster his MVP uh, talks. Uh, we have a question, Nathan. It says, uh, will we play well in the playoffs? And I was like, you know, and <laughs> Rashawn, hey, Rashawn goes, uh, if Dagnot if Dag, if Dag hits rotations correctly, well, good luck with that shit. <laughs> good luck with him playing the right lineups. That's. I mean, I'm going to tell you what. Here's the thing, though, Matt. We don't, we don't know yet. We just don't know because we've never seen it. Right, we haven't seen him. And right. we haven't seen it. Now, I want to, I'm going I'm to hold a reservation. Now, during the regular season, he sucks. We all know that. But I want to see the – to me, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But maybe in the playoffs, Presti will, you know, get in his ear and go, dude, all right, here's well, the Nathan, playoffs. So you've got to do this. I have a question for you. Our best lineup is really simple. SGA, jo, SGA Isaiah Joe. Wiggins, Kaysen, and then J. Will and Chet, but really Chet is when it really goes to another level. That's your best five when you're making a run, and he hasn't played that group together in I don't know how long. Yeah, it's been a while. That's since when – that is your – that since Gordon Hayward came – since Gordon Hayward was on our team, he does not play. And now he's playing J-Dub, he's playing Dort with SGA, which he hadn't done all year long. And he plays Kaysen and Wiggins with J-Dub. Because when those two, along with Isaiah Joe and SGA and Chet and uh, Wiggins, when they're in the lineup together, that's when they roll. And why is that? Because there's no question of who the leader is. There's no question of who has the ball in his hands. There's no deferring coming back and forth. It's SGA making moves and then passing to one of these guys for them to create space and open, create shots in open spaces. That's what the team does. Quite simple. You know? And so... No, I agree. I agree. Huh? What, he's talking, what he's talking yeah, about, that, yeah, what Rashawn says that there was a game he did play the rotation correct against Denver. Yes, Rashawn, we know that, but what we're saying is he hasn't, since Hayward's gotten there, he hasn't played that lineup together. He doesn't play them together anymore. Well, actually, I think he played them... Uh, who did we play that we beat... Um, God, who was it right before Houston? Who was it? Uh, uh, no, it was before. It was before the Bucks game. Whoever we beat before the Bucks, I can't remember who we beat before the Bucks. But that's the game. That's last the game he did that. Pelicans. Yeah. Pelicans. Yeah. Oh, he wants me to. Uh, Bex wants to say that lineup again. The lineup that we best roll with is SGA, Isaiah Joe, Wiggins, Kaysen, and J Will to start, and then you bring Chet in for the last two or three minutes. So really, Chet is the one where we really go to the next level. So that lineup right there is the lineup that works because you've got shooters, and what can they all do? They all can defend. Every single one of them can defend. So you get defensive stops, you get turnovers, you get out in transition, and when you get out in transition, transition equals easy baskets, which equal what? Flow of the game. And that's what helps the Thunder. So... That's what it is. You get, you know, because my thing is this. Wiggins not playing with SGA, I, I don't understand that. I, I'm like, dude, it's, how, did you, how do you not know your lineup? It's SGA, Isaiah Joe, Wiggins, Kaysen, and Jay Will and Chet. That's your lineup. That's the one that makes a run. They always make a run without J-Dub on the floor. Always. Except for tonight. But he had who? Isaiah Joe. I mean, they had uh, Wiggins and Kaysen in the fourth quarter. But the Thunder make their runs without J-Dub being in the game. That's when they make their runs. And that's a fact. But, dude, I, I just, I want to see, I want to see, well, first of all, my play, I mean, I, and I think you'll be in agreement with me on this. The playoff lineups need to be, obviously, SGA needs to play the most minutes. J-Dub. And okay, SGA okay, Nate, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. 30, 30. Okay, hold on. Let's go through it. You've got SGA, J-Dub, Josh, Dort, and Chet. That's five, right? Right? Yep. Okay. Then you're going to play Jay Will because you got to play him. That's six. Then clearly he's playing Hayward. That's seven, right? Yeah, see, that's what I want. I, I, I understand, but I'm saying clearly he's doing that. Then you have uh, then you have Isaiah Joe. That's eight. Then you got Wiggins, nine. You got K. Rich, ten. 
Kaysen. He's playing. And Kaysen, Kaysen. Excuse me. I'm, I'm gonna throw, excuse me. Those five plus Kaysen, and then J. Will. That's seven. And then he's playing Hayward. That's eight. And then you got Wiggins nine, and you've got K. Rich ten. Right. Exactly. Yeah, but K. Rich, he might have a couple DMPs depending on who we're playing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But my thing is this: but that. To me, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nathan. No, I was going to say to me, it needs to be our starting five. And to me, depending on who we're playing, I want to see, and that's not going to happen, but my ideal lineups are Wiggins and Kaysen get more minutes than Dort. Yes. And Isaiah Joe obviously gets about 20 minutes. And then Jay Will gets about 15 to 20 minutes. Yes. That's, that's, and that's it. That's, that's yes. it to me. Yes. Now, Rashawn says Wiggins hadn't played with SGA in ages. I think they played together a little bit. Uh, the game, the the game before he got hurt, the game before he didn't play against Rockets. I think they played together a little bit, but you and I agree that uh, that Wiggins has to be on the court. Now, at the end of games, I want it to be SGA, J Dub, Chet, and I like Wiggins for in spots and Dort or Kaysen and uh, Dort. Because to me, you can't yeah, have to, you, you can't have Josh on the floor unless you're throwing the ball in. If you got to if you got to have the ball thrown in, Josh needs to be on the court. Other than that, yeah, I, I'm I'm more comfortable with Kaysen in the game than than Josh. Yeah. I mean, to me, you know, I mean, like I said, but I want but because tonight Wiggins, when Wiggins starts playing, he tries to do too much. Like he went baseline and tried to jump jumped up and tried to throw a pass. I'm like, what are you doing? Rule, hey, rule number one in life of basketball is ball you man. Okay, that's rule number one. Rule number two is when you leave your feet, shoot the ball. <laughs> okay, you can't leave your feet and try to pass. That's disaster written all over it. Okay, that's rule number two. Okay, you, and the Thunder broke that rule. You can't, I mean, we had terrible passes because of that. You know? Yeah, oh, sure. by the way, Rashawn says closing. He likes Kaysen, Wiggins, Chet, J Dub, and SGA over yeah, Dort. Same here. I'm not. Yeah. A, I don't have a problem with I that either. You know, I, love, I, I don't have a problem with that either. I love it because to me, what Dort gives you defensively, um, Wiggins and Kaysen make up for offensively. Agreed. Because they're still pretty good defenders, and they can play really good offense. I agree. I agree. And, and imagine that shooting lineup. Holy crap, man! I mean, you got shooters. You know what I mean? Well, this is my thing. That's it's why. Not, that's why I don't understand anyway. Dagnall taking the ball out of SGA's hands. I don't get that. Put the ball in his hands. J Dub is fantastic in space, but when he's got to try to take the ball and make one on one, and he's got a guy because you notice tonight they started deeing him up. What did he do? Give the ball up. He can't. He doesn't have the handles to bring. He's not a one, and you're trying to turn him into it. And I don't understand it, Thunder. I'm like. Put the ball in SGA's hands. If he can't make it happen, he's going to set somebody else to catch the ball in space because he's going to create a double team. He's going to make the right decision, and then J-Dub in space is deadly. Agreed? And tonight, he was deadly tonight. When he's in space, what do you have, 31 tonight? I mean, he's deadly in space, bro. 30, yes, 30. Yeah, 30, 31. He, he's deadly in space. When you give him space, he's unbelievable. But the problem is he misses his free throws in the end. I mean, you ruined your 31. You know what I'm saying? You, you close the game out, bro. And then on top of that, why is he in there and trying to rebound on the offensive rebound at the end of the game? What that? What, wait, what? Let me see. Let me put out my seven-footer. Now let me have him in there to rebound on a free throw. Let me put in my 6A guy down there. I, I, don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. But what is your here, – here are – here are let's go. We're gonna do this, Nathan. Here are our, um, our box score. Okay, this is what we ended up with. Oh, J. Will had thirty three, and this is what killed us, Nathan. Twelve for twenty four from free throw line. Oh, that's a that's a big right? No, us. That's what we were. Twelve. I guess I didn't realize for twenty four from the free throw line tonight. We were 13 for 34 from three. We were 12 
for 24 from the free throw line tonight. And we lead the NBA in free throw percentage at what, 87 something, whatever? Whatever it is, something ridiculous. That is just, I don't know what to say on that, Nathan. 12 for 24. Chet, 0 for 2. J Dub, 4 for 8. SJ, 4 for 4. Josh Giddy, 0 for 2. Dort, 1 for 4. Dort had made 30 in a row. Okay. The stupid announcer's curse, man, I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? You do, I mean, it's just stupid. Yeah. I mean, look at this. I don't know what when to say, team. Nathan. J. J. Will, three for four. And then nobody else shot free throws. That's actually pretty good for him. But, I mean, think about this. Our starting five, Nathan, were four, were four, eight, nine, four, ten, fourteen, sixteen, twenty. And without SGA, they were four, five, four, ten of sixteen. They were five for sixteen, the starting five without SGA. Five. It's not like they've been free throw shooters. Five for sixteen. Yeah, I mean, you just hope they don't do that in the playoffs because if they do, we're done. You're, you're not winning the playoffs. And then Josh, Josh was just. And I don't, I don't watch Bollies. Did you watch the end? Was he the player of the game, or did they have J-Dub? Uh, I, I think Shea was, actually. No, it should have been Josh. I didn't, I, I, I didn't see who it was. I mean, Josh, Nathan, no, 16, 13, and 12? Two blocks and a steal? Dude, I know. <laughs> he was balling, man. Dude, sure. 16, 13, and 12 with a steal and two blocks. That's a uh, good line. I, did you did you see the stat that all all three trips to MSG had triple doubles? Oh, he has. You know that? No, I did not know that. And every game he's played, at, every game he's played at MSG has had triple doubles. He's played great. There's no question. There's no question about it. And then uh, here are the Thunder season stats, by the way, people. So you'll have a good feel for what the Thunder are doing. Okay. Ooh, hey, did you see uh, LeBron? LeBron Walk off. Jordan I was, 30 point huh? LeBron uh, just passed Jordan in 30-point 30, 30 game. Well, I, I saw LeBron walk off the court last night with with 10 seconds left on going in the game. He's a prima donna, man. How the hell do you walk off the court during a game? That's Russell Westbrook. I don't get it. But anyway, the, Thunder, not, are third, exactly the Thunder are third in points scored. 13th in giving up points, which is really good. And free throw percentage, we're number one, Nathan, 83%. And we shot 50. And three. Dude. And three-point percentage, we're number you, one. You, you, just, you sit here and say that, and you think about think about two years ago, where we were at. Yeah. I mean, geez. And then tonight, we're – and then the last couple games, we've been turning the ball over more than our opponents – and we're number we're fifth in uh, we're number one in turning the opponents over, and we're fifth in turnovers for ourselves. So offensive rebounds once again, <laughs> we're last and last, <laughs> next to last and last. So it's just the worst. I mean, the, our stats are staggering, and that's one of them because yeah. it's so bad. It's just bad, dude. It's just oh, uh, Josh was the player of the game. Hey, Nathan, Josh was the player okay, of the game. Good because he should have been. Here, here's, here's, here's the thing about this, though, Matt. Like, how do you fix that on this team? I don't think you can, can you? What's that? Because the, the rebounding thing. Because you got to be bigger. All the guys you want. Well, but see, all the guys you want to play. I mean, you can't rebuild the team. Well, this is the thing. I mean, you, you like, but, Nathan, here's the problem with the Thunder. In our positional players, we're 6'7 and 6'8. The Nuggets are 6'9, 6'10, 6'11. The Minnesota Timberwolves are 6'9", 6'10", or 6'11". The Boston Celtics are 6'9", 6'10", or 6'11". The Milwaukee Bucks are 6'9", 6'10", or 6'11". The Lakers are 6'9", 6'10", or 6'11". Okay? That's our problem. What I'm saying is they've got 6'9", listen, but Nathan, they've got 6'9", or 6'10", guys doing the same thing our 6'7", kids are doing. That's the problem. Yeah, but no, hold on. So when you say positional players, do you mean – Everybody on the floor, or you no? I'm talking about your forwards. Your 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 seven your 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 threes and fours, okay. Like we play K. Rich at at center. 
He's 6'8". How the hell is he playing center? I don't even think he's 6'8", to be honest with you. Well, what I'm saying is that's 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 the thing. I mean, aren't you coming too far down the road to fix that? Yeah, we're done this year. Swapping players. Listen, at the beginning of the draft last year, I said the Thunder need three things. We need shooters, three-point shooters, which we fixed, correct? We fixed that. We need wing defending, and we fixed that because they were killing us, taking us to the basket last year. Our points in the paint were terrible. Okay, given, I mean, we, we just couldn't defend. So you had to fix that. And the third thing you had to fix was get bigger in the paint. So we fixed two out of the three things we had to fix last year. Now, this year, coming back into next year, you have to fix the end of paint. You cannot, you, we're just too small. Now Golden State got away. With, now remember, Golden State got away with it because Stephen Kerr, Stephen Clay would go off, and you couldn't afford to be big because they're killing you. You know what I'm saying? So, but can you can you fix that though? Like you gotta. I mean, is, that's not a one guy fix. It's not a one guy fix, is it? No. No. So, what I'm saying I mean, is you have to. Well, no, Nathan. What I'm saying is at our at our three and four positions, those guys are six nine, six ten, or six eleven. We are six seven, six eight, yeah, but especially at the four. Don't we have the guys? Don't we have the guys we're going to have? Though, I mean, no, for now. But kinda... in the draft, you can go get somebody. The problem is you can't add somebody who's older, okay? Because we're young, so you have to go through the draft. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, but you can't. You're not going to take away from minutes you got from guys you got on the floor now. You have I mean, to so, at some point I mean, next year. I mean, like, oh, who, Nathan. Who are, you, who are you taking minutes from? Oh, I'm gonna take minutes from uh, K. Rich, right off the top. But but he but he didn't play a big role. I'm right? gonna take minutes from him right off the top, because no, that I way, mean, I, I don't listen, you, but... listen, because then I can play Chet, J. Will, and a guy to seven foot. So, or I could play Wiggins, and I could play. I can have a set two seven footers on the floor. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And they all have to be able to, but like the Thunder's philosophy is you got to have me a guy who can shoot the three, which is what's going to happen to yep. the big boy from Purdue. He can't shoot the three. What do you think? Of, we have a question here. What do you think about the uh, center from UConn? He's, he's Nathan, good. Nathan, he's what do you think good. about the guy from UConn? Um, I like the guy from Duke better. I do too. Because uh, he, he, he can't shoot the three. He's not horrible at it. I mean, he's not 40%, but he's not horrible. And if you remember correctly, I think Jay will come out of college and shot like 20, 27% from yeah. three. Okay. So, I mean, to me, you get, you get, I, I like the, I like the Filipowski. I, that, that'd be my guy. I like Philip. I like, he moves really well. Uh, he could defend. Uh, I do, only, I do like that. I just. The only two, the only, the only team in the NBA is starting two big white dudes. <laughs> we don't, we don't want to be doing that. I'm <laughs> just saying. I'm not. I, I don't necessarily. He doesn't have to start. Well, you're, you're, but listen, you're Nathan. He doesn't have to. Confident. He doesn't have to. He don't have to start. But I'm just saying, playing lineups, you can do that. I mean, okay. I like it, but to me, I, I like. I mean, I know you're saying Jay will him and, and Chet together, but I mean, I like Jay will man. I mean, if you throw him out there, you know, with Chet, I mean, I think that's a good lineup. But they don't want to do that. Well, they do occasionally, but uh, your boy Rashawn Robinson, he says we should play K. Rich at four, Chet at five, or J. Will at five, and Chet at four. Yes, that's what we've been saying, is that Chet needs to be at the four, not the five, and that J. Will needs to be at the five. And K. Rich doesn't, he yeah. needs to, he, you need to rotate depending on who's playing with him and Wiggins, who you're playing against. I but I prefer Wiggins time. over K. Rich. And I prefer yeah, absolutely. I prefer him over that. So that's kind of how I look at it. I mean, if you're talking about playing carriage at the three, I mean, I don't want any part of that. No. We've got other guys that can play that position better. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. But now I'm going to say this. The UConn yeah, center, I mean, what is he, 6'10"? Uh, Isn't he? Close, I think he is, yeah. I think he's 6'10". Let me, let me, let me look. And I wouldn't mind having him. Uh, Nathan, but uh, like I, I agree with you. I like Filipowski better. 
I do. The, the thing about Filipowski that I like is he's two fifty. Yeah, but he's athletic. And, but he can. But he's athletic. He can move. That's what I like about well, him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's got some beef to him. Yeah, I like. I like. He's got size, uh, and I because to me, Chet is just a four. He just is. Now I don't mind him starting the game. Okay, hold on a second. What? The dude from UConn. Oh, he's seven two two sixty five. Ooh. Yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, like that. who said who, is, who asked us that? He is. And he's a, he's only twenty eight percent from three. Though I, I don't again, but Jalen was twenty seven. But I mean, I'm I'm going to tell you this right now, and he's only twenty seven percent. He's only taken like ten of them all year. Um. If Presky doesn't think the guy can shoot a three, he's not. Yeah, he's not taking him. He's not. He's not not taking him. They're like, and that's the thing with that. With the Thunder, this is the deal. You can't, the reason why, now I said next year, did you know that uh, Stephen Adams is is, going to be with Houston next year? Did you know that? That's going to be scary for them. I think they said it's going to be Houston. Yeah, he's at Houston. But my thing is this, with the Thunder, yeah, with the Thunder's philosophy, of wanting to stretch the floor, and we attack. We're number one in the league in attacking the basket. You can't have a guy in the middle who can't shoot the three. Because no, you, you can't. You, you got to have a guy who shoots. relies too much on, on the middle of the road, yes. You need, what you need is you need Miles Turner. That's who you need. A Miles Turner or a uh, what's your guy from Cleveland? Uh, uh, Mobley. But Mobley can't shoot. That's the only problem. I like Mobley, but he can't shoot. Yeah, but what I'm saying is he can at least get in there and defend and take that. Yeah, you know, he's oh, a uh, pretty good defender. Man. Hey, Nathan, they said, oh, you can take minutes from Dort. <laughs> oh, you can take up. You know, see, that's the thing. I know everybody that listens all the time. I do, I swear to God, I flip flop like a 16 year old girl on Dort and, and uh, Josh. But <laughs> if Josh can play like this, and I think he can, then Dort, you can. Go grab, you know, some bomb poms. Yeah, my deal is this: Josh is Josh is playing the way that I thought Josh. I was hoping Josh was going to play at the beginning of the year. Absolutely. But I'm kind of agreeing with Rashawn about him being better with, off the floor with SGA. But it's just like you and I said: that's because Josh is limited to just shooting threes when SGA is on the floor. Yeah, that's that's not his game either. It's yeah. really not. I mean, he he's picked it up. It's better. But yeah, he's gotta he's gotta be able to do that. And that's why I said the lineup of SGA, Isaiah Joe, Kaysen, uh, Wiggins, and Chet, J. Will and then Chet for you know, Chet J. Will for about two minutes and then Chet for the final three to four. That group right there is just outstanding because they're all long, they all can defend, they all can shoot the three, they all are very, very good at understanding who the leader is on the court. And this is my hey, thing. Let me let me throw this at you. Yeah. Philip Askey's lined at line on Friday in the tournament. I think it was Friday. 29th, that was Friday, right? Hey, yes. Philip Askey's line at the tournament. It was 16 points, nine rebounds, uh, and he was three for five from three. Yeah, so but that's okay. That's, that's but your, that's the that's college three. That's, that's, your the, that's the college three, not the yeah, I know, three. but, I mean, that's all we get, that's all we get to judge him yeah. on. Okay, here you go. We have a question. If I'm – the Burgess forty seventy one says, "I think the Thunder own the Jazz's lottery pick. Presty uh, may move up to grab the other Williams brother." <laughs> they laugh out loud. Yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> no, because they don't. They don't. They don't own the pick. They're, they're not going to get that pick. No, the it's, Jazz it's are losing. The Jazz yeah. are losing. You call? How? They're when not. did you call that? Two weeks ago. Did yeah, you say? Yeah, did you say the Jazz are going to lose? <laughs> the Jazz yeah, are losing. Not, yeah. they're, they're losing. But the, the nice thing about that pick, though, Matt, um, I believe, and I, and I don't know for sure, but next year for sure it conveys the same as it does this year. Um, so if, it, if we don't get it this year, we get it top 10 protected next year. But then They're going to be way better. The year after the, They're going to yeah, be better. The year after that, I think it's only it's only top eight protected. So yeah. we're, we're going to get it. It's just going to be a matter of when. Yeah. Uh, we have a question that says, how is it so obvious if we can see it and Mark can't? Dagno. That's the age all. That's the that's the million dollar question right there. We don't we've know. We've been saying that all year long. Okay, <laughs> Rashawn. Okay, the athletic can go back and look. Early in the year, they said that clearly that SGA and Chet are ready to win. The Thunder administration, which means coaching staff, 
is not ready to win, and neither are the players. Well, and here's the thing you need to understand about that, too. They don't breathe without Presty say so. so. That's what I just said. They, yeah, they're not going to do anything Presty doesn't want them to do. Correct. That's what I said. The administration's not ready, nor are the players. Well, but the coaching staff, you know, I mean, it trickles down. I mean, well, no, no. What I'm saying is, not, the coaching staff, the coaching staff and administration are one. So whatever Presty says, that's what's happening. So the coaching staff and administration are one. Whatever the coaching staff is doing is they are told to do it. So they're one. They're, 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 uh, honestly, more than most teams, the, the coaching staff, they're puppets. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Let's be honest. But, uh, Mark, Rashawn, to answer your question, that uh, the, how do we not see the rotations? Because Mark Dagnon is a managed manager. He is a G League coach that's magnificent at two things. Making talent, making your younger talent better, and calling out of bounds plays. <laughs> He's magnificent at those two things. Okay, he is a minutes manager. He's a minutes manager. He's not a. He does like in the beginning of the year or in the past summer. There was an article about him. They interviewed him and SGA, and SGA was like, "Why do we need a superstar? We have me." That's what SGA said. And then Dagnall comes back and says the fact that, oh, well, you know, we have team first mentality and da 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 you know. The hell are you talking about, Dagnall? No, you have a superstar. You build around your superstar. So the question that they were asking in the article is, can Dagnall, we know he's a good coach, but can he coach a superstar? He cannot, clearly. He does. That's not what the Thunder want. Because this is the thing. Let me ask you this, Matt. Yeah. Do you think, and, and I, I assume probably not, but, do you think in any way that Dagnall could shift his coaching strategy because Presty's maybe not necessarily holding him back, but just basically telling him not what not to do? Yeah, maybe, Sam Presty maybe. has Sam Presty has a philosophy on what the hell he wants to do, no matter what anybody says. Now to change that up so a little bit. Now to change that up a little bit, Nathan. Based on when we start calling the Thunder out on this show, and then people start asking questions to people when it gets back to them, and don't think it doesn't. They change up little things that we're talking about. Agreed? That's been all year, right? Absolutely. And I've been this has been going on for a year and a half. Okay? So the thing is this. It's not that the Thunder, and like I tell people, Oklahoma is a knowledgeable football state and community. Basketball-wise, mm-hmm. it's an infant or it's in junior high as far as basketball knowledge. Maybe high school, but more junior high-ish as far as basketball knowledge. And the Thunder can say what they want and do what they want. Like People are still mad at Kevin Durant. They're blaming Kevin Durant. No, it's the Thunder is what made Kevin Durant leave. You can be mad at him for going to Golden State all you want to. The Thunder picked Russell Westbrook over Durant. That's what they did. So instead of you being mad at Kevin Durant, why don't you get mad at the Thunder for picking Kevin, picking Russell Westbrook over him? How the hell do you do that? And what? And like once again, they're <laughs> picking, they're picking J Dub over SGA. How the hell do you do that? Do you not understand talent? What the hell are you looking at? I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm telling you, Russell Westbrook changed how he did things because the Thunder allowed him to have power. You see the exact same thing with J-Dub. And now you can say what you want to. SGA threw a shot across the bow at the Drake concert by only inviting Chet. And then in the AT&T commercial, he and Chet addressed what, Nathan? Just alike. Now, nationally, everybody's saying this is what the Thunder are doing. This that's not what the Thunder are doing in house and us because we don't we're not watched enough. Now you get to be on TNT Tuesday, you get to be on ESPN. So now the Thunder are gonna start coming under the microscope. So all this stuff that Dagnard is doing, and uh, you think these guys who are on TNT and stuff are not gonna start noticing? The more you're on TV, the more they notice what's going on. And the Thunder aren't going to be able to get away with stuff, just like end of last year when they didn't want to admit that they were losing. Yeah, we were calling you out. Yeah, y'all are losing. You're purposely doing lineups. You're doing stuff to lose. And then when we lost that one game, I forget, to the Hornets or whoever it was, Dagnall being under pressure, and what did he do? He folded like a chair, an old chair. He folded. That's what he did under the pressure. 
and had to admit what we already, what we had been, what I had been saying and others had been saying for months, what they were doing, he finally had to admit it. And then tried to backtrack. No, you knew, thank you for admitting what we've already been saying. And it's the same thing now. They're doing the exact same thing. They're not trying to win. And I was just, uh, you got, let me see, uh, you got Rashawn said, we're spot on about basketball knowledge. He's from California. And when he speaks to others from Oklahoma City fans about the rotations, they are satisfied being above the six seed. <laughs> uh, I agree with you, Rashawn. It's, but it's, not, it's just that Oklahoma is a football state. It just is. It always has been. And what I try to tell people is because it's a football state, they whatever Sam Presti and the Thunder organization say they fall behind. They whatever oh they know what they're doing. Not necessarily. We if you if you know about basketball, you're like, what the hell are you doing? You have a chance to win last year. We talked about this. The biggest problem the Thunder have is they have no playoff experience unless it's SGA and Dort. Nobody else has playoff experience. Okay. Last year you could have made a run in the playoffs. You had a chance to be the sixth seed and really start pushing it, and you backed off. You got into the play-in, and you didn't even want to be in that, right? Remember, Nathan? We didn't want to be in the play-in. Yes. Didn't want to, we didn't want to do it so we could get that eighth spot to get a high draft pick. Now, I'm perfectly comfortable with Kaysen. But remember, the year before when you had a high draft pick, didn't you trade up? Didn't you give away three, three first-round picks to get Jang? <laughs> we even talked about him, man. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying you gave up three first round picks to get him. So, I, I, you know, my thing is this: I disagree with a lot of people because I've said many times the Thunder in the last year and a half have had so many close games. We know how to win. We know we have to get stops, which we did tonight. Off gave up how many offensive rebounds we give up? They got what three shots at the end. Mm. I guess. But, but they all were what? Defended well, not wide open. And yeah, so that's what happened. And you notice at the end of the game who was on who was on uh Brunson? Do you remember who called who was on him when he missed uh, that last shot? Oh, was it was it was it Shane? It sure was. <laughs> that's who yeah, he said, sure. Yeah, no, nah, bro, you ain't scoring. <laughs> it wasn't J Dub. It wasn't yeah, yeah. it wasn't Kaysen. Yeah. SGA said, No, you yeah, well, I'm I got you, bro. And remember, yeah, we, ain't, we ain't playing the, the door rewind. Yeah, you know? and this is my thing. SGA sure. is going to be all defensive team for first all team. He should be first all NBA team for two years, second year in a row. And he's going to be all NBA defense. And I don't know if the Thunder have ever had an all NBA defensive player and an all NBA player. Mm, was Paul George that one year? I don't think he was both. No, he, Paul George was, was, I don't think he's 30. ever been first team all NBA. The, well, he, that was the year that he won the year. He was, he was like third in the MVP points, wasn't he, or something? No, but I'm talking about for the Thunder. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one year, uh, last year here, I think. But he got hurt, though, at the end of the year, so I don't, I don't remember. But. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think Paul George was all NBA, D, first team all NBA defense and all NBA. I don't think the Thunder have ever had that. Now, we've had multiple All-NBA no, I mean, players because Kevin Durant was yeah, multiple first-team All-NBA. But defensively, I don't yeah, think we – Yeah, so I don't I, – yeah. Yeah, I said so. I don't I don't think we've had one. I think he's going to be the first one to be All-NBA and first-team. Huh? Paul George was last year here in 19, right? Uh, yes, because 2020 was COVID, right, when we went to the – Yes, yes. Has he been with the Clippers five years? This is fifth yeah. year? Yeah, he has. He's already he signed an extension with him already, yeah. Wow. Uh, by the way, the Clippers won mm-hmm. tonight, too. Shocking. Yeah, yeah so you know, whatever. So it's getting close. But anyway, any other, any other thoughts? If not, you can save them up for tomorrow on After the Storm. Let me – I mean, on the unpopular just, uh – Hold on just a second. I got 2019, 2020, 2018, 2019, first team All NBA. Yeah, Paul George's first team All NBA. 
uh, that year. Uh, he wasn't all NBA first team all defense. Yeah, I don't know about that. But he, well, it should be on there. He was all NBA that year. Well, just look up first team all uh, NBA defense. Let me see here. So he was on the he was on the all NBA team. Let's see if he was on the all defensive team. He he was on first team all NBA, right? Or just on all yes, NBA. First team all NBA. Okay. Uh, no, he was first team. First team. All defensive teams. He was he was on it, but he was on the second team. So we've never had a first team. So he Paul George was first team all NBA and second team all defensive NBA. Yeah, so pretty close, pretty close. That's pretty close. Uh, goes, do we rest SGA, Rashawn, do we rest SGA during the Sixers? No. My thing is this. I didn't want you – I said, uh, Rashawn, what I said is I don't want the Thunder – I don't want SGA playing until he's 100%, not 80%, not 90%. Because if you're playing him at 90%, that's, he still – he still does – he still limped a little bit at the end of the game. Did you notice that? I don't – I think he's – I think he's 90%. 85 percent it ta- I've had it I've had a deep thigh bruise it takes it takes longer than four or five days to heal now of course that was back in the day and the technology is much better we had to wear those little electro things that they tape on your leg you had a little little thing you had to go to class and you had to have these electrodes taped yeah. to your 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 thigh and it's just going off and people are looking at you like what the hell is why are you buzzing dude it's not a vibrator it's a I'm, I'm getting before cell phones too yeah why well, you gotta bring that up Hey, let's, let's let's call that what it was, though, man. That wasn't way back. That or that wasn't back in the day. That was way back in the day. Oh my God. Anyways, so the answer to your, answer to your deal is uh, no. SGA plays from now on. He's got the rest of the year. So what we got coming up down the stretch is really really key. We've got at the Sixers Tuesday night. Uh, then we have at the Celtics Wednesday night. So and I need to change that to. Uh, ESPN, and I knew it was. I knew they had. I just saw that today where it had changed. Yeah, go ahead, Nathan. Probably a shot. I'm not. I, sh- I shouldn't take, but I, I wouldn't be myself if I did. Um, so tell me what what play looked more like Randy Wright? Was it the dunk from Hayward, or was it the the miss dunk, dunk from Hayward? When he missed the miss dunk from Hayward. <laughs> the miss dunk from Hayward. The miss dunk. Okay, I'm just checking. Hey, by the way, did you see? If you if you didn't, you need to go and check it out. Go home, get on NBA TV, and watch just watch an episode of Game Time. There's a shot Luca took in warmups. Have you seen this? Yeah, the one he's that he threw it way up in the rafters. Is that the one How you're talking cool about? Was that? that was unbelievable. No, yeah, he threw it off the scoreboard, off the screen. But twice, he did it back to back. Yeah, he did it back to back. Cool is that, man? That's pretty cool. Uh, then, of course, on Friday night, it's on KSBI, which I don't. We have the Pacers. And the Bucks on KSBI. I don't really like that. I, mean, I, I like that it's free. But, but okay, Nathan, kind of- here's our thing. We said that the Thunder have to go 2-2 two and two in the next four games. You got the Knicks game because we thought that they were going to win, what, the Knicks and the Pacers and lose the Sixers and Celtics. Is that what, kind of what we thought? I actually thought they was – no, I thought they'd lose the Pacers, win, win the Sixers. But, I mean, take a pick. It's either lose to the Knicks – Went, beat the Knicks. You thought they would beat the Knicks, right? We all thought that. Yeah, you beat, Drew. beat the Knicks and the Sixers, and then lose to the Pacers and the Celtics. Well, I think we won't lose to the, the Pacers because one, Gordon Hayward won't be playing thirty minutes, and number two, he won't start. Uh, you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. We don't really know yet, sure. do we? <laughs> yeah, we. I'm pretty sure. He, his minutes have been cut down. If you didn't notice, which I love. By the way. Yeah, I do too. Hey, we got. I got to get. I gotta give Drew Henthorne a shout out on that. He called that from day one, man. Yeah, he did. He did. I just, to me, it's like I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. But the Thunder, the, but the whole thing is this is this is what I love about and then Rashawn answer your question. I think the Thunder because the Thunder being on TV more, they are forcing the Thunder's hand to rethink how they're doing things. Like I said earlier, because yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Do you think? You're going to see a shift next year in, in – Well, you're going to see a shift in, this year. Uh, yeah. This year? Okay. Yeah. Because the problem is 
if you don't change and you start and you and now you're on TC, the whole thing is the Thunder can do whatever they want. Cause they're on Bali, and you're kind of watching the highlights. That's all these guys and these stats, these people, these report. They're not watching the game on Bali. They're watching the stat. They're seeing the replay. They're doing. They're going to YouTube and watching the the highlights. That's what they're doing. They're not watching the game. Okay, and the Thunder are very methodical about in their highlights how they do stuff. Okay, like that one game SGA mm-hmm. had thirty five or thirty four, whatever it was, and there was six highlights of him uh, shooting and a shot of him missing. There was like ten highlights of J Dub scoring. I'm like, he had twenty two, he had thirty one, and he's got more highlights of scoring than he does. But that's the, the Thunder. Works, if there's any, if there's any questionable calls or like if it. If they're going to do a replay and they and it's a questionable replay that they might lose, they don't show the replay at all. Well, okay. First of all, they don't show that on the the big screen at if we're here. If there's questionable, we don't show the replay. If it's questionable for no, us on TV, either though. Well, that's because it's uh, well yeah. they they do more than not. It depends on how quick it is. If it's a replay that's under review, they show it. But if it's just a quick, like the other night, well, I forget what it was. I think tonight too. If they're just going to the free throw line, they don't really, they don't show. I don't understand that how they don't show the replay. But if it's a real quick where, yeah. boom, you go to the free throw line and they give them the ball, then they're they're not going to show a replay and take away from somebody shooting a free throw. They're not going to do that on live TV. But if there's a controversy, then yes. But at like if there's a controversy where Mark Dagnall calls a timeout because I don't know if you've been you know at Thunder games. When you're at Thunder game, if there's a questionable call that that there that uh, could be going against us, it doesn't show on the replay board, unless the guy call, mm-hmm. unless the coach calls challenge. But they don't give the coach a chance to mm-hmm. see it on challenge to see it. That's why they have those little iPads on the deal so they can watch the games. Mm-hmm. And if there's a questionable, they can tell the coach. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. You can you you have this little if you know if you watch they have a little iPads they have somebody with a little iPad they're watching and they let them know hey blah 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 check you know we we need to redo that or no we don't and it's all but if you're the home team you never if there's a questionable call you never ever give the opposing team a chance to uh, give a challenge and that's and I'm okay with that if you're at home I don't, I don't if there's a questionable I don't want you seeing it. <laughs> You know, leave it up to your guy. I don't want you seeing it. I'm not going to give you a chance to overturn something for us. That's our way. I'm not doing that. So I have zero problem with that, with the Thunder doing that. But like I said, the Thunder have a deal coming up. I do believe we've got the first game out of the way, which you had to. I do believe SGA had to play. I, I don't I don't necessarily know if SGA had to play tonight, but I think if he, we don't play SGA, we don't win. Obvious by the last shot, right? <laughs> well, but but you know what I'm saying? It, it, we don't win without him. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, yeah. um, you, you know, you, you, you gotta have. An off game. But it's, once it's, again, it's, though, but, but he had a. Remember, he hadn't played in a week. Yeah, no, he's had thirty points in forever. Yeah, he's he's uh he's not had he's he scored thirty points once out of the last six games. Now, granted, one of the games who we blew out, he he didn't play the fourth quarter. He had twenty one, mm-hmm. I think, and. You know, twenty three or whatever. He didn't play the fourth quarter, so he would have probably had thirty if it wasn't for that. I think the last game he had thirty was when he got. Well, I think when he had scored his fiftieth time or th- what was it, thirtieth time scoring fifty or fiftieth time scoring fifty or whatever. Yeah. I think he's had 50, one game 50, since 50. then that he scored uh, over over thirty. Remember they left him in so he could get that thirty points. Remember so he could get the fifty. Yeah, I think he's had yeah. one thirty point yeah. game since then. So, I don't know. Is that, here we go, Nathan. He goes, based on what we have said about Presti, if we beat the Celtics on Wednesday, will that force the front office to change because of media attention? I think that's what we're saying. Um, yes and no. I mean, he is. He is I think so, but I'm telling you, man, Presti, he doesn't, he doesn't get rushed, man. No, 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 no. He has a plan. I agree. He has a plan. But the one thing the Thunder, uh, one thing the Thunder are really a, a, a astute to, is when people are calling them out. They're they're if you if you call them out on something that they were doing that they thought was undercover, they change. 
because they don't want to be made to look bad. They, they don't want to make, be made to look bad or look terrible. They will change. That's one thing they will if you do. you go back and look at history, too, and this is just with players, if the players are, are – if they have any interviews or anything, and they're questionable players, obviously you're not going to get rid of your stars. But, like, I think there was a couple of interviews with Ibaka, and there was a couple of Mitch McGarry. Of course, he didn't amount to anything anyway. But if they if they call the organization out at all, did they get rid of them? Like, yes. They, they trade them. Uh, yeah, you can't call – you can't say anything. You can't say anything bad about the Thunder organization. That's out of what they have a narrative. They understand where they live. Okay. They understand that they have a, a, a fan base that's not knowledgeable about the game, about basketball. They have, they understand that they can create and whatever the negative, the narrative that they create, that's what people go with. The majority of people. Like, I mean, that was evident, that was evident earlier in the, in the year when, when J Dub tried to, you know, when he tried to, uh, Get the ball or he waved Shea off or something. Oh, yeah, he's hurt a few games. <laughs> yeah, he was hurt. Yeah, that well, that was yeah. a clear because hey, we're we've got this. But you know, J Dub was trying mm-hmm. to exert. He was trying to be out front with it, and the Thunder said, "Oh hell no, we we got this." Yeah, don't worry I mean, about it. Was any lesser of a player? Dude, yes, the dude might have been traded. To be honest with you, yeah, I mean, if he'd have said something, that was. Just, but you yeah, remember though, no, but Nathan, Nathan, player. Nathan, the reason why he did it is because that's when the Thunder were making, putting him ahead of SGA. And he was making a statement to SGA and SGA was like, hell no. Because remember, that's when SGA went over to get the ball from him and he went to pass it and then he went and then SGA walked up to him and he waved SGA off. That's what happened. And then SGA was, and then J Dub was hurt for three games, and we won two out of three very easily without him. <laughs> and there's one thing that's evident: we can win without J Dub. You can't win without Chet, without SGA. You can win without the one. You can't win without the other. So that's a fact. You're what five and one, five and two without, or four and two without one, and one and three with one and two without the other. Yeah, I mean, it's not even close. I mean, everybody wants to play. No, 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 no. No, yeah, remember, from our perspective, not the Thunder's perspective, the Thunder coaching staff and administration believe SGA has, uh, J-Dub has the bigger upside. That's what they think. Just like you calling him a superstar. Yeah, no, he ain't that. He ain't that. You might have just said that in the exact words that I completely agree with you. You said upside. I think that might have been the first time you've used that all year long. Yeah, Upside more than SGA. I don't care what word you got. It's insane. He does not have more upside than SGA. No. That's uh, having more upside no, no, is insane. No, no, no. no, no that's yeah, no. I agree with you. I agree no. with you. But I, I think you said you said all year that you think that he. Uh, let's see. They think he's going to be a better that overall that player. He, he's a, well. You said that he. They think he is a better player. No, that he's going to be a great, better overall player. That he's going to be a better overall player. A better player than SGA in the future. That's what they think. So upside to me is the yeah, same thing, using different now, but whatever it is is idiotic. However, whatever word you want to use is idiotic. J Dub is not going to be first team all NBA and first team all defense. That's not happening. No, well, here's another thing too. Like, who who cares? I mean, if you're the Thunder, like, why do you care about that right now? Because you got to pay SGA four hundred. Because you have to pay SGA four hundred million. That's why. And nine twenty nine organizations would not care. This is <laughs> Oklahoma City. Hey, understand where you live, bro. I know. Understand where you live. Okay. I know. Understand the state that's you're why, in. That's, that's why Chet was taking over Jabari, right? That's one hundred percent correct. But I, but <laughs> my thing is this: I like Chet. But you remember, they were taking Chet number one overall regardless. And Chet is not – you can't tell me we would be a better team with Jabari than we are with Chet? Yes, we're a better team with Jabari than we are with Chet, 100%. That ain't even up for negotiating, 100%. Oh, hell yeah. You got a 6'10 guy that's a number four that can run the floor, shoot, block shots, and do everything, and score? Physical? Not going to get pushed around? Yes. Defensive? You think he's better on the defensive end? 
Well, Chad's a better block shot blocker, but he can guard. He can defend out better. Yes, I'm taking Jabari over Esh, over. Listen, no matter what. Is, listen, no, no matter what. In, okay, you, Nathan. Uh, well, listen, what I'm trying to tell you is this: They asked the kid who played high school with him and college with him. Do they have the number one pick? They add that would be like you coming to Nathan. I said, Hey, Nathan. You play with this guy in high school. You play with this guy in college. Do you think we should take him number one overall? We should take this guy. And you told me to take the other guy because you played with him. They did not arbitrarily come to that decision. No way. And yeah, I'm taking Jabari over Chet because I want more athleticism. And then what do I do? This, then you know what I'm saying. I can go get me some big guys that I can put in the middle. But Jabari is gonna. He's not gonna get pushed around like Chet, and he's gonna get rebounds unlike Chet. But he's not gonna block the shots that Chet blocks. So Chet gives you something interior with blocking shots that he does it because I think the Thunder lead the NBA in blocks. I think they're number one in block shots mm-hmm. per game. I think they're number one in shot blocks. They're not too close. Yeah, I think they're. I, I think they lead the league in, sh- in blocking shots. So, but anyway. All right, bro, any other questions you got? You got to get out of here. Yeah, I know we've been on here forever, haven't we? Yeah, uh, 95 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I will say that I love this, this question stuff, man. I like, I like the Well, more and more people questions. are starting to come online and, you know, go to YouTube. And like I said, go to YouTube, like, subscribe, hit notification. And we'll kind anything you want to comment yeah, about, we can see it. And then also if you want to comment on any of the stuff we're commenting on, please do and we'll talk about it, so. I'm sure that the, the 100% of the audience is probably, well, me and you disagree on a question, they're probably screaming at their computer. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Scream at your computer. But my deal is this, well, is I that, no, this is the deal, Nathan. Saying, like, shut up, dude. We want to hear that. No, 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 no. No, the thing is this, Nathan, you give good, I mean, like I tell you, I mean, some things you say, I'm just like, what the hell are you talking about? But you've changed my mind on several things, and we've talked about that. I don't have a problem with anybody mm-hmm. disagreeing with me. I have no problem with you throwing out points. As long as your point, if your point has a better, if your if your point is better than mine, I'm going to take your point. And I've done that twice. And I think as a person, you're an idiot if you don't, if you have an argument about something and somebody gives you a different perspective and you know that argument they have is better than yours and you maintain your argument even though you know it's wrong, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. I don't ever do that. Man. No, I'm not saying you are. I'm saying anybody, period. I'm talking about in general. Yeah. If you have a point about something and somebody comes with you for a better point, if you don't agree with their point, knowing that their point is better, you're an idiot. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit that, you know, there's there's tons of things about basketball that, that you and Drew know that I don't because of, you know, I give you shit about it all the time. But, I mean, it's, it is true because you played and I did. Right. So, and, it, well, see, this whole thing is like, like Bex, like the girl Bex earlier, she's a girl. I mean, I have no problem with a woman having an opinion. You know, and my deal is this. There's certain things that you can play the game as a woman that there's certain intricacies and things about the men's game you can't really know because you didn't play. There's certain things about the women's basketball in general I get and I understand. But there's the intricacies of little things that women do that men don't do I don't understand. Okay, so I'm going to have my opinion on it. But if there's a woman who comes in who played basketball and says, hey, well, no, this is blah, 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 then I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm going to always yield to someone who has more knowledge than I do because they understand the intricacies of what sport that is, regardless of what sex you are. That's how I am. I'm always interested in growth. I mean, I'm always trying to get smarter. I don't, you know, I know I'm not wrong a lot, but there I am wrong from occasionally. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. All right, bro. That's my guy, Nathan Taylor of YMB. Uh, Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow, bro. All right, man. Good. Uh, good show today, by the way, my friend. It's a great show today. And for thank you to all you people who got on YouTube and went ahead and liked, subscribed, and hit notifications and then made questions and comments about the show. We appreciate your feedback, and uh, it was greatly appreciated. That being said, hey, tomorrow afternoon we'll be going over a lot of this stuff tomorrow and the NCAA men's and women's brackets tomorrow uh, on av- on the Unpopular Hour, our show that we do our daily uh, afternoon live stream. So that being said, everybody have a fantastic